Hey everyone, we're excited to be back for the second part of Kids Incorporated, which is the continuation of last week's episode in the series Love Beyond Words. If you haven't watched the first half, the link is below and we strongly recommend you view that first. You can also find the links to the other videos in this series in the description below. So as we begin, let us call upon the Lord in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So last week's speakers, Francis and Anna, will take us to the other two C's that we need to keep in mind while parenting. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Thank you, Andrea and Byron. Good evening to each and every one of you. We are happy to be here with you all to continue sharing about the four C's that we use to raise our children. Last time we shared about commitment, our commitment to God and commitment to our family. We also shared about how necessary it is to communicate and keep the lines of communication open with our children. Today we will share with you the third C which is correction. Correction and discipline are very important in raising our kids. It is not an easy task, neither is it very pleasant, especially for those who are at the receiving end of the correction and discipline. But our God tells us that he who is our father disciplines us out of love. And so the bottom line in correction is love. It is easily said than done because I know that I am quite hot tempered and I tend to lose my cool very easily. And so when I was, I used to correct my children, I would sometimes hurt them with my harsh words. And so we decided that uh, correction and discipline in our home would be enforced by Francis. Though we would talk about issues, we would stipulate the consequences of disobedience, we would set the rules together so that the children knew that they could not play as one against the other. Also, the punishment and the consequences were set according to their ages. Okay? When they were very small, they were made to sit maybe in a corner or in the naughty chair or often they were just picked up and spanked on their bottoms. I remember when I was a little girl, I said a foul word to my dad and to my great surprise, he just picked me off the floor, put me across his knees and carry back my bottoms. Believe me, I never said a foul word again and neither did my father ever have to raise his hand on me again. Uh, in our home also, when we, our children were growing up, I told them that foul words have no place in this family. But when my daughter was growing up, she picked up a few choice words in school and she thought she'd try them at home. So I warned her, I said, if you speak like this next time, I will wash your mouth with soap. And uh, I don't think she took me very seriously because a few days later, I heard her using the same words again. So I promptly held her hand, took her to the bathroom, uh, wiped my, uh, spiked my hand over the soap and I just touched her mouth. And I told her, I said, how does that taste? And she said, yuck. I said, yes, foul words are yuck. And they will not be used in our home. And believe me, from... We don't use uh, foul words in our home, even when we are angry, and even now. You know, when initially when Anna told me that I had to discipline my children, it was difficult for me because I'm a happy-go-lucky man. I love to play with my kids. And uh, it took me a while to discipline them. But once I started disciplining them, I realized the, the benefits because they would listen to me. And I believe today, that all parents, especially the fathers, if they discipline their children, it becomes more effective. You know, uh, initially, when you discipline them and you say, okay, if you don't do this, this, you will be punished. And they think, they take it very lightly. But once you enforce the punishment that you, told, you tell them that you will enforce, then they believe you. You know, I'll give, let me give you an example. You know, uh, 
when my kids were young, we went on a company picnic and uh, we went to the beach and all the children there were playing and all of them were misbehaving including my two. So I went up to them and I told them, you know, see, please don't misbehave because the parents are getting irritated. I went, but they continued misbehaving. The second time again I had to go back and tell them, see, you are still misbehaving. No, Baba, everybody is doing that. I said, no, I am not interested what others are doing. But if you misbehave again, you all will be kneeling on the sand. They took me lightly, I guess. And uh, when they did it a third time, I went to them. I said, come. And I made them kneel on the beach. And uh, I believe what I did at that moment, though it embarrassed them, it was very, very effective. They would many a times, you know, talk about it. And, uh, you know, like Anna can say about this now. Yeah, even today, when we talk about it, uh, there are no hard feelings. They have realized that what their father did was good for them at that time. And uh, we, it has now become like a family joke. So when we get together, that's what they talk about sometimes, about how they were punished on, by kneeling on the sand. You know, I, we as parents are called to be role models to them. And we cannot have double standards in our life. I remember, I used to tell them when they were growing up, smoking is bad. But as far as I went, I used to enjoy one cigarette after my meal in the night. And uh, in Vietnam, they would come and tell me, Papa, if cigarette smoking is bad, how come you are smoking? I would say, no, but it's, you know, I just smoke one cigarette. But when I looked at my life, I had to give up that, that uh, cigarette. It cost me, but I did it because I wanted to be an example to my children. And so I believe that we are called to be role models. Okay, to our children because they look up to us. Parental, parental authority is also very important in their teenage years. You know, when our children are growing up during that particular period, the children themselves are discovering themselves, you see. And when we add pressure on them, like because of studies or exams or because what friend circle they move about, it adds pressure. And, you know, I noticed this. They either sulk or they will rebel. And when they sulk, they'll sulk for a, for a long time. And so we used to have, during that period, we used to have a little bit of a cold war. You know, children would not respond to you, and they would not, uh, they would be in their room. You know, it, it actually, it pained us during that, those, those particular years. And uh, I realized that we had to give in a lot of our time. We really had to show a lot of love. We, have, we had to be available for them whenever they needed us. And... Uh, Believe it or not, those were the trying years that we had, right? Trying years. But one solace was that if whenever we turned to God and told God, God, they are your children more than us. And you help us. You give us the wisdom to raise our children. And believe it or not, those years, though it was difficult, you know, it, it was okay because God was with us. And we could help them grow in God's ways. I would like at this moment to hand over uh, for, for a bit of a sharing and I'll leave Glenn and uh, Nula to share their experience. Thank you Francis and Anna. My brothers and sisters, I'm Glenn, this is my wife Nula. We've been married for the last 22 years and are blessed with three children, all in different age groups. The eldest one is 20, the second is 16 and the third is 10. Well, in the last 22 years of our marriage, one of the challenges we faced when it came to parenting was with the use of social media. When we saw all the students around us being affected by rampant use of social media, which took away their study time, physical activity, etc., we decided that we needed to do something about our children to protect them from the same. So we sat down and we discussed about it and finally laid down certain rules for our children. Like we decided we would buy our eldest daughter her cell phone only after she passed SSC. And in the meantime, whenever she needed to go on the net for her school activities or whatever, we would allow her to use the desktop, which was in a common place where we could keep an eye. In 11th standard, we bought her her cell phone and again laid down certain rules. Like we didn't allow her to take it to college. At home, we would have timings for her. And in the night, we wouldn't allow her to keep it with her overnight in her room. We applied the same rules for our second daughter, but it was a little easier with her because she saw that we stuck to the rules with our first daughter. 
she just answered her SSC this year and now looking forward to her first cell phone. Our son who is uh, in the fifth standard now already uses Mueller's cell phone to keep in touch with his school WhatsApp group. So these are some of the rules we apply for our children to keep them, try and keep them away from social media. Although it was a combined decision, it wasn't easy implementing them. Uh, due to the peer pressure, time and again, our eldest daughter uh, would come home from school all agitated and would question why only she wasn't allowed a cell phone. And uh, so I had to sit her down and uh, explain to her the ill effects of uh, using a cell phone at that age. Sometimes I had to even take her out to convince her. And uh, besides that, Glenn and I would uh, pray for them constantly and uh, lift them up in prayer and surrender them into God's hands. And we also got them close to God by taking them for daily mass and uh, praying the daily rosary. And uh, we drew our strength from uh, Acts 16.31, Believe in the, the Lord, Lord and you will, will be saved, saved you, you and, and your family. family. Thank you. Over to you, Francis and Anna. Thank you, Glenn and Nula, for sharing with us about how you distinguish your own children where the media was concerned. Um, I would also like to share here that uh, uh, discipline just doesn't mean punishment or correction uh, or laying down rules. It also means teaching our children to be bring good order in their lives. Okay. And I remember one area where which I would like to share is where finances are concerned. When our children were small, we would give them pocket money. And they were very clearly told, you will get this much for this time. Okay, You can use it at one shot, you can use it over the, or the week or the month or for whatever time they were given it. You will not get more. And uh, also, uh, they learned, they struggled. And uh, sometimes they would grumble because other children would get more money and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, as they grew up, the, the amount went also went up. But uh, we also taught them uh, when they received any additional money, which was for their birthday gifts or their Christmas gifts, first of all, before they spent any of that money, they had to set aside one-tenth for God and maybe take it to their next Sunday uh, Mass and put it in the collection box. But this helped them, I believe, especially when they grew up and they left home to study and so they had to live on a budget because we could afford to give them only so much to spend on their hostel and their accommodation and, uh, and food and so on and so forth. And so uh, they, having learned to manage their finances, uh, they were able to do with what we gave them. And it was very rarely that they would come and say that they had overspent and they needed more money. Can we go to the fourth C? Okay. The fourth C is companionship. Now, we wanted to spend as a family in each other's company. You know, when I was young, the early memories that I have is a fantastic family time together. And so I wanted this family time, you know, uh, for my children. So we decided, because I was working from Monday to Saturday, we decided that Sunday afternoon would be family time together. So after a good meal prepared by Anna and all, and we would have a nice meal. And then the afternoon was for the children. And we invested all that time for them so that they realize how important family time, recreation is in the family is important, you know, as we, as we enjoy each other's company. One of the things that we introduced in the, uh, during that time is in board games. We brought in a lot of board games. We had cards. So we would plonk on the bed, we would enjoy ourselves thoroughly, then we would play carom, and uh, many at times we would like uh, we would ask Anna, you know, prepare some sandwiches, and we would head to the beach. We would really have a fantastic time together. Uh, these times together continued even as the children grew up, and uh, maybe we did different things. But uh, especially the Sunday afternoon was a family afternoon, like which would, if we did nothing else, we would just sit on the bed, five of us, and we are all plus sizes sitting on the bed, bent, uh, being squashed together, but we enjoyed it, pulling each other's legs, sharing about the week, and so on and so forth. And so this 
time or we would have some outings. Also, we had family holidays, which we even nowadays talk about them and remember all the fun we had, the fights we had and whatever happened in those days. And this family time is still important to us. Though our children are not living with us, we make it a point at least once a month, we all of us gather together and have a meal together so that we can just spend time together or we go out together. But this time is a real fun time where we just sit and chat and and uh, and it's quite a noisy and chaotic time now because now we are eight adults and six children, but it is real fun. I think now we can ask Ian, our son, to share. You know, before that, I'd just like to add, okay, that um, parenting is not always easy and it is difficult and involves sacrifice, but it also uh, uh, it involves a lot of agonizing and pain sometimes. And I want to share how in my own life, I did most of my parenting on my knees. Okay? And the, the two things, two promises of God that I held on to during that time, one was from Proverbs 22 verse 6, which says, Train up your children in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. And the second one is from Isaiah 54 verse 13, which says, Your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. And I believe God is faithful to his word, and these were the words I clung on to when parenting became difficult. And maybe now, now Ian can come and share how maybe these very truths apply to his life. Thank you, Mama and Papa. Hi, I'm Ian, and this is my lovely wife, Sheena. And we've been married for almost seven years and have three beautiful boys, Luke, Evan, and Noah. My parents, while bringing us up, taught us to live within our means. And so I remember when I was small, I all wanted a new bike, the latest video games, a fast computer. However, just because I wanted something didn't always mean that I got it. And this, um, this many times made me very upset or angry, especially when I used to see my friends getting things so easily. However, through all of this, I learned the ability to determ determine whether something was a need or a want. And if it was a need, my parents taught me how to budget for it so that we could buy it in the future. I remember when I was in Pune, completing my master's program, I used to get a monthly allowance of 6,000 rupees, which would take care of my fuel, my food, my accommodation and other utilities. Whereas my friends used to spend an average of 25,000 rupees. Now, it was not that I was lacking in anything. It's just that I was spending on my needs and not on my wants. From our experiences, we have learned the importance of being brought up with the right values and in the faith. And so as we bring up our kids, we too want to pass on the same set of values to our kids as well. Right, Sheena? Yes. Small as our boys are, prayer is already an important part of their life. They start and end their day with prayer, but also through the day, they know how to take up even their littlest troubles up to God, like if they have a lost toy. They also each have their own Bibles, and it's such a joy to see them sit with their Bibles every night. Sometimes Luke, my oldest, will read out loud to his brothers. Our boys know that when they misbehave, they will have to face consequences. Our older two are usually punished for misbehavior. And punishment could mean maybe taking away their TV rights or no dessert or being put into a naughty corner. And sometimes, if required, they get paddy back too. In disciplining our boys, we realize that sometimes they'll get upset with us, especially when we say no to them. So what we do is that when we say no to them, we tell them why we're saying no. And if they still choose to be upset, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, we are their parents, not their pals. And as parents, it is our goal to get our kids to heaven, to raise them in God's way. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Mama and Papa. 
Thank you, Ian and Sheena, for, for sharing your life with us. Just to summarize now, we, we, we have looked at four C's to the last week, two C's, this week we have, we have seen the next two C's. We looked at commitment. We said commitment to God and commitment to our family is very important for us. Second thing we said is communication. And we talked about lines of communication with our children should always be open. We can never be too busy for them. And the third thing we talked about is correction. Correction and discipline has to be done in love. No matter what, we cannot give up. It has to be always done in love. And the fourth thing is companionship. Time to spend together as, as a family. Fun time. Have fun time together, which is very, very important for the family. Now, to conclude, I can only say one thing. We are not perfect parents. We have made a lot of mistakes in our lives as, as, as parents. And we have hurt our children. Uh, we, we also need, we needed to apologize to them. But the bottom line is, God who has given us children, He will see us through all that parenting years time. Because He says to us, if we focus on Him, He will bless not only us, but He will give us the wisdom to train our children in the ways of the Lord. So I thank each one of you and all glory is to our God. Over to Biden and Andrea. Wow, there's so much to parenting. But thank you Francis and Anna for breaking it down so wonderfully into the four C's. It was very inspiring and assuring. Thanks also to Ian and Sheena, Glenn and Nula for sharing your lives with us. I think for me, correction with love is something that really struck a chord. Because uh, while we tend to get angry very soon with people who are close to us, I think we are called to deal with these situations in love. True that. Uh, for me, the part in companionship really hit home. That if we want our children to reflect our belief system, uh, then we need to spend time with them and demonstrate it to them so that they can learn from that. We are sure you all enjoyed this two-part episode of Kids Incorporated. Next week, we are shifting gears to a topic with a very interesting name. Managing your piggy bank. That's a cute name. But I'm sure there's something more serious behind that name. <laughs> um, tune in next Saturday to find out. Don't forget to like the video, share it with others and tell what inspired you in the comments below. And that's it from us. Have a blessed week ahead. See you soon. Stay, Stay safe, safe. Good, good night, night and, and God bless. So Andy, talking about C's, uh, isn't tomorrow like the Feast of Corpus Christi? That's next week, baby. Tomorrow is the feast of the most holy trinity, the ultimate companionship. Oh, yeah.